All right, I'm going to try and answer side plate angles quickly using some arts and crafts. So this is a bit of paper, we've done our crafts, cut it out. That is representing a RS cutter. It's a full chisel steel cutter. So we've got our 30 degree top plate angle. We've got our 60 degree side plate into our 85 section down there. Even glued in the 60 degree top plate cutting angle. May or may not be 60 degrees. Was when I glued it. So, what have we got going on? We only measure side plates at the very top. We only measure it at the very top because it's the only part that matters on a full chisel cutter. On a RS from factory, they have a 60 degree uh, side plate angle that comes in looking like that purely because they've done it on a grinder and that is the exact same shape they've ground into the top plate cutting angle. Because they've done it on a grinder, just like you might at home, it ends up being flat. If we do it with a file, it has a little bit of an arc in it because a file is round. Is it better flat over round? I've done this a lot. Honestly, if it is, I couldn't tell you. It seems to make little to no difference. I'm going to see why I don't, I'm not an artist. Let's draw a poor quality cutter. There's our top plate. Yeah, we'll just go like that. So, where do we measure side plate angle? We measure this bit here. That's all we care about, is this little bit here. Why is that? That is because if we look at a full chisel cutter from the front, what we see looks a little like a number seven. Excuse my bad drawing. So, that is our cutter. It is cutting wood. This green line can represent the edge of our kerf. Full chisel cutter will cut the entire width of the kerf in one pass. Part of what makes them very efficient. So, the part of it that actually makes contact is very, very small. Just this little bit here. It's all that's making contact with the side of the kerf. After that point on, that cutter is tapered to come in and clear out of the way. That's designed for a reduction in friction and just an overall more efficient thing. So all of this is just free space. So, with that in mind, when we look at it from the side, that is why we only care about this little bit. Down here you could put, I don't know, put a rectangle on it, couple of teeth, couple of teeth hanging out, end of the day, it is not going to have much of an effect on its ability to cut because it shouldn't be in contact with wood. There may be clearance issues with some styles of wood in softer woods. Um, it may be a problem. In the hardwoods I cut, it isn't. This does change slightly depending on the chain type. So let's do another one. We'll keep this one much more in line. That is the side plate angle we're measuring. This can be a semi-chisel cutter. We'll see what I end up drawing. I'm not very good at this. Too much kick in there, but we get the point. Now, on a semi-chisel cutter, we may, may measure that down further. There is a little more importance as what's occurring from that top of the top plate down the side plate a little further. That will depend on the type of chain that you have, the type of semi-chisel you have. Same thing here, we put our green line, I put it in the wrong spot, but the part of the side plate on this that's cutting is lower down. It's down here. So, what happens here? This is why we see differences in recommended angles between a full and a semi-chisel. On a full chisel cutter, we might see, we'll use still as an example, 30, 30, oh shit, hang on. I'm starting to ride that like I'm about to shoot something. Let's correct that, back to chainsaws. 30, 60, 60. Yeah, so 
on a full chisel shape, we're talking 30, 60, 60. That's a 60 degree side plate angle. Our 30 degrees is across the top. If we view the cut up from above, can I draw that? Probably not, but whatever, we get the point. That angle through there would be our 30. I like to call that the file, 60, 30. I like to call that the filing angle because it simplifies it. So we'd have a 30 degree filing angle, our 60 degree side plate angle, and our 60 degree top plate cutting angle that I cannot draw. However, on a semi chisel chain, we generally get different recommendations. You will probably see something more in line with 30, we'll just say 80, 60. So this situation, they're looking for an 80 degree side plate angle through here. Why is that? It is because the actual corner part of the side plate here that cuts wood is down lower, down below the top plate cutting angle. Because of that, the shape that you naturally form as you run a file in through there, you will put a 60 degree angle on that top plate cutting angle and probably 80 over here. So that's part of the reason why there is a natural reduction in it. If you look at all manufacturers, they will generally have that. Some of them have changed now. There's things like the Husqvarna S85s and their 325s. Uh, they are calling 6060. 60. The reason they can do that is because of how small that corner is. So it actually extends further across and has just a very little rounded shape over there. I did a video recently on semi chisel. If you check that out, you'll understand. So that's the basics of it. It's also why things like chipper chains and some of the big style semi chisels run 90 degree side plate angles. So that's what the angles are and how they work. What's my experience with them? Generally, if we draw in a tooth, I don't want that. I don't want it to be too pointy. Round filing, a full chisel, at best I can generally get about 75 degrees. It's not ideal. Uh, when I square file, I aim for between 80 and 85 most of the time, but have had a lot of success running 85 to 90. I generally find trying to get around this 85 mark to be the magic number. You need to account for the fact that that tooth is going to rock back on impact. Having that 85 degree angle lets that side plate smack straight up and down. Seems to work really well. On a semi chisel, I run between 80 and 90 on the majority of them. The only exceptions to this is I'm having a lot of success with those Husky 325s with that really small corner radius and I am running 60 to 70. They work well at that, which is odd. They are a bit of a standout. Nothing else really likes it. On a round file full chisel, that 75 is about what I want. Generally, by reducing that side plate angle right here, as we reduce that, and I've showed this um, when I was hammering a cutter into a piece of wood, it means the side plate here starts severing those fibers before earlier, which means this top plate is in the wood for less time. Now, the more angle you put on there, if you come across and you end up with something like that, this is like leveraging something with a screwdriver. We we'll use this file. If you stick the file under something and start using it like a pry bar, that's the action that occurs on the end there. So the further that point sticks out, the more of that it cops, that extra force, and it bends it. So it basically gets pained. Usually it starts folding down. That's at least what I've noticed. So that's why you try and avoid it. While we're at it, if we draw a cutter, say a nice one like that, well, it looks good to me. When I hear the term hook, hook always was, and this is since the beginning of the earliest manuals I can find for sharpening this style of chain, hook was used as a term to describe a sharpening mistake. What people would do is come in with the file like that. 
Now you can get away with this. If you leave the angle up here all right, you can do that. What you can't generally do is come in with your file like that, where you're cutting this big section of tooth out through here. That leads to all sorts of dramas. So, really the terms we're looking for when we're sharpening chains is, I call it filing angle, which can be your top plate angle. And that's just your, you know, viewer cutter from the top sort of thing. Oh wow, that's a terrible job. They have clearance angle, but not that much. Something like that. That's your, your filing one. You'll usually have a witness mark. Your side plate angle. Good spelling. Kick an ass there. And that is your cutter viewed from the outside. So you'd come in and you'd measure just this upper bit here, and that would be your side plate angle. Your top plate of cutting angle, I cannot draw it. For the life of me, I cannot do it. I'm not very artsy. Can't help you. But yeah, that's the basics of it. Uh, I do want to do this a lot more in depth at some stage in the future, but that's just an idiot using some arts and craft to try and explain it. Hopefully it clears it up a bit.